Welcome to the Fourth Watch, mighty friends. Brother TC coming at you live. Down in the bayou, y'all. Getting ready for the next festival. I hope you are too. It's the most treasured one. The Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. Well, we are commanded to rejoice in the everlasting glory upon the earth for seven days and seven nights. The marriage feast with him, the Mashiach, whom enters inside each heaven, yea, found within each heart that has escaped mystery Babylon. Yeah, and when, and when you approach Jerusalem, mighty friend, and have come to Bethage at the Mount of Olives, then Yahshua sends to you two disciples. Yeah, witnesses to speak an everlasting before you. It is not I. It is not he. It is an unseen we. Ye. Then you'll hear Yahshua say to the two disciples, Ye, you and your faithful witness inside, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them back to us. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, Yahushua has need of them. And immediately he will send them. Yea, a donkey and a colt. A donkey and a colt. A colt. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Isaiah 62 and 11. Yea, for the daughters of Zion's, yea, let them not be ungroovy. Yea, let them come out of Mystery Babylon. The disciples went and did just as Yahushua had instructed them and brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them. And he said on the coats, most of the crowd spread their coats in the road. Yeah, they're covering. And others were cutting branches from the trees. Yeah removing unrighteousness with truth in their hearts and spreading them, yea, like badger skins in the road. The crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, 
Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Maria Hoshua. Yea, everlasting glory of Maria Hova revealed upon the earth. Hosanna in the highest. And he had entered Jerusalem. All the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Yehoshua from Nazareth in Galilee. Yea, and the people, some stood in disbelief, some stood in marvel and wonder and some simply went along their way and then Yehoshua entered the temple that had been built and rebuilt and drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturn the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He was preparing the temple that you may have eyes to see this very day that the leaven within the temple Even the rebuilt one they had done was full of filthiness and rotting flesh, a wanting even to this very day. And he said to them, It is written, The house of Mariahova shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den! They come in some other way than the way of holding Yehoshua's hand. And they are thieves. They've stolen everything they possess. Wickedness. Cunning craftsmanship. With darkness. Yea, in their spiritual nature. They seek light. Their light comes from darkness. Make sure, brother, ye, you mighty friend, that your light does not come from darkness. That your light is everlasting and there is no darkness within you. For the blind and the lame, ye, Let them come to this temple you've made and let them be healed in the name of the everlasting Father. Not because of this temple brought forth by man's hands. Hewn stone that's forbidden. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done. And the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant, full of jealousy, and the darkness within their hearts revealed upon the earth. And he and said to him, Do you hear what these Uh, These children are saying? And Yahshua said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes, 
you have prepared praise for yourself. Have you never read that? Do you not know that the that little oh that little Charlie that cuddled so gently and loving full in our arms? Whether in our five or six percent mind or in our hundred percent mind, he is joyous in our arms. Yeah, and he reveals heaven and ways of everlasting to those that believe. Yeah, and he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. Now, in the morning, when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. Yeah, I found that very same thing. Yeah, like a lamb skin, kind of sort of like a prickly little fig leaf. Yeah, that's all you find. There's no fruit brought forth by wickedness. Fruit is only brought forth by a good tree. Yeah. Would it be a redwood? Yeah. A General Sherman. Yeah. With tracking down a road of glory. Hmm? Nothing but leaves on it. So what did Yehoshua say? Are you ready? No longer shall there ever be fruit from you. Unfruitful trees. And at once the fig leaves. And the fig tree withered. Seeing and tasting the salt upon their lips. The disciples were amazed and asked, How did the fig tree wither at once? How was that even possible? That tree just, he spoke though, he said, no longer shall there be fruit from you. And and the thing just withered away before us instantly. And Jesus, ye forgive me, Yehoshua answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, you have faith and do not doubt. You will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea. It will happen. And all things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. It begins with a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds.
Yehoshua entered the temple. The chief priests and the elders of the people came to him while he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you the, this authority? Yehoshua said to them, I will also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, yea, Johannan the Immerser, was from what? From heaven or from men? Hmm, they all reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the people, for they all regard John as a prophet. And answering Yehoshua, they said, We do not know. So Yehoshua said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Yea, your name is not written in his book. Yea, you are like the kings of the earth that are passing away. At the parable of the two Sons, be a twinkling in your eyes. But what do you think, hmm? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in the field. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he regretted it, and he went anyway. Do you have things you regret? Do you have work for the everlasting that must be done? The man came to the second. Yeah. The father and the son came not they came to not the eldest son who refused him. Sounds sort of like Reuben. Hmm. What's that other old boy's name? You know. Jacob's brother. You know what I mean. So the man came to the second and said to the same So his father came to not his eldest son, but his second son, and said the same thing to him. Oh, and the faithfulness of his second son was like beyond anything he ever hoped his first son could have. And he answered, I, sir, He did not say, I, I, sir. So he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? Hmm? What would you say? Yahshua heard, listened to them speaking, and the first said, Yahshua said to them, Truly I say to you that the tax collectors and whores will get into the kingdom of God before you.
For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and whores did believe him. Yea, all the whores of Babylon, and you, seeing, tasting the salt, did not even feel remorse after so as to believe. Your fate witnessed in the book of life. So listen to another parable, mighty friend. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and rented it out to vine growers and went on a journey. Dare to enter in the kingdom of heaven, hidden deep inside. Take the journey, mighty friend, of mystery and discovery, and unlock your carnal mind. When the harvest time approached, ye, a feast of tabernacles is when the grapes are harvested. Ye, and the washing of the feet, once ye, the wine press has been trodden, I'm here for you, brother, that you, having stomped your way out of mystery Babylon, Having gathered in the grapes of wrath. Having sung songs of liberty and truth. Yea. When the harvest time comes. And it is. At the very door. When the harvest time comes. It's coming quickly, mighty friends. He sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. And you know what the vine growers did? They were like weavers and twisted the word. And, and they... Oh, Father, when the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. The vine growers took his slaves and beat one and killed the other and stoned a third. Stoned one third. Again, he sent another group of slaves larger than the first. And they did the same thing to them. Hmm. But afterward, he sent his son. He saying, they certainly will respect him. And give us our portion, our fair share. But when the vine growers saw the sun, <laughs> the evil spirits in their hearts, yea, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. Ha 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 ha. Evil ways. Yeah, their lustful natures for the things of this world. Denying the everlasting. The mystery of heaven all around them. They took him. They grabbed him and threw him. 
threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Yeah, be careful. Those that say they are Jews and they are not. Yeah. Be cunning. The eyes of a serpent. The mouth. The tongue. Yeah. Be gentle as the dove that lights upon your finger. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? Hmm? Will he forgive them? And let them continue along their unrighteous ways. Is that what a good God would do? Or would he try to be merciful and do something for them to help them, to nurture them, to open up the spiritual mind of everlasting by the love of the truth in their heart, the love of the word in the palm of their hand each morning, seeking the kingdom upon rising and the righteousness of our king of the Sabbath day, the king of right understanding, the king of righteousness. He, our brother, our everlasting Father, Son, ye the wise master builder inside each of us, let him come and be merciful. So they said, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him for the proceeds at the season, near the appointed times. Yahshua said to them, Did you never read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected This became the chief corner. This came about from Maria Hova, the unknowable one. He revealed only to his son his will and the faithful son only doing what the Father requires for the kingdom of light. And is it marvelous in our eyes? Therefore I, the we of us, say to you like a lamb, on the green pasture. The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. And he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. But whoever Whomever it falls, ye, it will scatter him like dust. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about them. Even this day, 
when they sought to seize him. They feared the people because they considered him to be a prophet. <coughs> Yahshua said, are you ready for more? Yahshua spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven he may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He, and he sent out his slaves, his bond servants, to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast and they were unwilling to come. Yeah, I can attest to that. Three and a half years only one came in three and a half years. A mighty man of steel and iron. I call him the rod of iron. He's a mighty marine upon the earth. He, a man of steel and honor, never laying blade upon the rock. He, an apple once bitten, repented. Now he lives everlasting along our side. Oh, mighty Yehovah, the everlasting glory given each of us at this wedding table, this wedding feast. Let us be joyous ye, for a week as is this day a thousand years, and this day is the millennium year, the millennium day of everlasting. Eh, let us let it be the day of preparation for the everlasting Father's, the eternal Father's Son. The everlasting sun is coming quickly, mighty friends. Again, he sent out others, even more slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatted livestock are butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went about their way, even until this very day. Went to his, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, the bond servants, they come willingly into the everlasting upon this wicked world who dare to enter in heaven upon the earth and turn away from mystery Babylon, yea, and stand before the word of everlasting, yea, a reed, let it be a red, an R-E-A-D-S-E-A -E -E to an S-E-E, -E the red of the word they see. 
and the Red River parts. Yea, and the covenant is renewed, the blood covenant restored by Yehoshua, that when the moon rises, the river would not flow. Yea, and the stench of the ocean would be as fresh water flowing from the mountain tops of old. Then he said to his bond servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Who will be found worthy, mighty friends? Will you be found worthy standing in Mystery Babylon? In ways of darkness in your carnal mind? Imprisoned by Mystery Babylon? Go, therefore, to the main highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding feast. Yeah. From the east to the west, and then the west and to the east we have gone. Sowing the seed of everlasting. The grooviness of the divine vibe hidden deep inside the yellow submarine. Even in the year of its anniversary. 1968. 2018. A jubilee. Happening once again. All debts are paid. Yeah, all is forgiven. The prodigal son comes home. Tears on his face. His flesh beaten and torn. The blood of Yehoshua flowing in his veins, in our hearts that walk, breathing through the hope of glory, the scent of heaven, drawing it in our nostrils with each breath we take, for the Father has given it to us. Mm, giving thanks from our heart with Yehoshua's love of the everlasting Father. Ye, the spiritual mind given over to the Son. That your carnal mind, your little five or six percent, if you give it to Him, He will give you. 100% of your mind. And the Father's will, revealed only in part, until the fullness of the Son, yea, He is coming quickly. And those that have prepared themselves, those that Stand, having done all to stand in white raiment upon the earth. Their spiritual everlasting, their new Jerusalem. In this moment, this day, Father, unlock Remove those rusted locks that hang long along their temple sides. 
Let your word of everlasting, let the Mashiach enter inside each one, each one with a dark badger skin. Let him conceal the blood of the lamb. that his goat hair would be covered by the lamb's blood. Yea, that Joseph, yea, that each covering, yea, would be made groovy deep inside, a coat a covering, a psychedelic, yea, what will it be in our day? A coat of many colors, a jubilee time ago, it was the psychedelic, drugs and evil, weavers came and slaying of little babies began and corrupted in all their hearts with demons and darkness and the little ray of hope they had in their spiritual minds was quickly filled yea legions filling the hearts and minds of men even to this day So what choice did the bond servants have to bring forth the everlasting glory even this day? So they went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests, the overcomers, Ye sons of love, ye daughters of faithfulness and truth, ye daughters that have their right and their left hands connected to their earthly nature, even still bridled ye by Yehoshua, their bride, ye, their husband, ye, two as one. There is no man, no woman, no slave, no free, ye. There's no difference in any spirit that, well, there's a difference in the spirits, that's for sure. There is no difference in how they are move in and out. So let's let's get this. Those slaves went out into the streets, those bond servants, and they gathered together all that they could find. Yeah. Both evil. You know who you are that are trying to slither in. But it's the everlasting within you that's beckoning you, that's casting out all the leaven in your temple. That you can drink the cup, that fifth cup with Elijah on that treasured day with the knowing of everlasting having been set free upon the earth. But when the king of everlasting came in to look over the dinner guests, he'll see you in your wretchedness. 
not dressed in wedding clothes, but having on darkness, synagogue of Satan wrapped around your heart, hanging, yeah, locks on a temple, driving the world to a carnal third temple in a place that causes war, death, destruction, and blood and guts upon the earth. Yeah. That's where they're wanting things to go. So what did the king say? Mighty friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? Hmm? And the man was speechless. Yeah, we see you, brother. The eagle's eyes are keen and his talons are strong and crisp in their cunningness. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few chosen. Are you a chosen, willing vessel? Or are you chosen? to be shipwrecked on the raging sea. Your porpoise skin never was found. Then the Pharisees, they went and plotted together how that they may trap him in what he was saying and they sent their disciples to him along with their Herodians saying oh teacher teacher we know that that you are the truthful and 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 teach the way of God in in truth and defer to no one for you are not partial to any oh then us then tell us what do you think is it lawful to give a poll tax to caesar or not but yahshua yeah, that keen eagle eye within the hearts of the everlasting sons of righteousness perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrite? Show me the coin for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Then Yahoshua said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to Mariahova the things that he has given unto his son Yahushua, the everlasting glory of the word in a man's heart and mind upon the earth. And hearing, they were amazed, and leaving him, they went away. So on that same day, it was the Sadducees' time. They were sad, you see, because 
They say that there is no resurrection. There is only this carnal life. Oh, the prison in their students' minds was me sad. So they came asking teacher, Moshe said, if a man dies having no children, his brother as next of kin shall marry his wife and raise up children for his brother. Deuteronomy 25 and 5. Hmm. Perhaps a lightning bolt will heaven will pierce your veil when you hear these words again. May your everlasting glory here be revealed in a glimpse in the twinkling of your eye that you would know the time is short. Repentance sorrowful nature tears and weeping and gnashing now in this moment a moment upon your lips or an everlasting in the pit of hell everlasting upon your hips having been fattened by mystery Babylon, by your carnal nature, your five or six percent boxed in that inebriates yourself every moment that you can get and find and enter into this world of wickedness of mystery Babylon. The whore of Babylon, your shame, yeah. your shame is before us all, your wretchedness, your destitute nature, your unwillingness to repent, your love of the lies inherited by our fathers. So our Father has given you your greatest desire, the love you lie, the lie you love. Which is it? It's for you to decide. Now, there were seven brothers. He, they were all with us. And the first married and died. Ye, the prophets of old were killed by these men. And having no children, left his wife to his brother. And so the second and the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died. Well, looks to me like you're asking the wrong question. The, these men that received not the Son received the curse of the Son. Yeah, their whole family line was cursed. They're so blind to even see their own revelation brought forth by themselves. Let this day the words of Yehoshua open their eyes. Let the snake's scales fall from their eyes as the skin of the flesh is shed. Yeah, let another rattler. Yeah, let two seeds. Yeah, like two pence on a brass bell rung. Or 
shit em wood. Covered. Yeah. Gold. Cherubims. Flaming swords. Yeah, piercing hearts in the morning, setting men free from the evil of mystery Babylon that creeps in at every moment. Every second of every day you are tested. The snake tries to slither in. And that bitten apple, that place where the worm is found in the core of the rottenness of the apple. Turning in the wretchedness of the earth, deep in the hollowed out places of the earth. Yahshua answered them and said these words. <clears throat> you are mistaken, not understanding the scriptures, nor the power of the everlasting Father's Son. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. This is a carnal mind thing. That the glory of God could be revealed to as one before them. First in the natural. Then Yehoshua and each one. The father and Yehoshua married the husband's wife marrying Yehoshua faithful for the, there is only hovering and only angels For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by Mary Yehovah himself? When he said, in Exodus 3, 6. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Am I? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when all the earth heard, they were astonished at his teaching, for their eyes had been opened to words they had read their whole lives this very day. But when the Pharisees heard about it, that Yehoshua had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them a lawyer, a cunning man of the craft. Ye, his father's father, father. Ye, the mightiest of all the stone masons. A trade. Ye, like the name and the power of the sun upon the earth. That Radiance in Moshe's heart. That radiance upon the hearts of the everlasting sons. Even you, mighty friend. You put that mustard seed in your heart. And you let it rain upon you. And you nurture it each day, seeking first the kingdom of heaven. And the righteousness of the everlasting son. 
which is only brought forth by the love of the word, which is the Son. And the Son comes back before each of us in a day and a time that none of us know, not the angels in heaven, not even Yehoshua, the Son of the Everlasting, the Father himself. Only he knows when he sends you knocking upon the door with a truly repented heart that Yehoshua, the Mashiach, in the Father's perfect time would enter into your heart and two as one with the Son. You both can rebuild the temple Wise master builder, hidden deep inside your heart, in heaven together, upon the earth. In the word he reveals himself, and in that treasured moment when the word comes alive, and all mystery Babylon is revealed before your eyes. The twinkling is only the planting of the seed. The revelation comes with your love of the truth, your battle for the word. Ye of mystery Babylon. There is only one uncorrupted word, only one language not confused, the holy language of Hebrew, entrusted to those that worship and love Yahovah, and they are faithful to do their work. But there are those among them who say they are Jews and are not. They are the synagogue of Satan that looks to bring forth the natural temple to deceive the hearts of all the earth. You are the temple. This is the living word revealed in your heart. And so this cunning lawyer asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Yehoshua said to him, You shall love Yehovah, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. And with all your mind. This is the great and foremost of all commandments. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So those in Mystery Babylon... They could not receive this word. And on these two commandments depend the whole of the law. And it is what the prophets, even unto this very day, stand upon. The love of the Father, the unknowable God, His name, the pronunciation of his name, confirmed by Hebrew scholar Nehemiah Gordon and his research team, they have found over 1,500, I think it's over 1,600 now, ancient Hebrew manuscripts and also writings of sages, Jewish lovers of Yehovah of the past with the three, see there's only 
there's usually only two vowel points on the name of yod he vav he and so the understanding of its pronunciation has always been twisted and corrupted and it's been intended that way that the power of the everlasting father could not be revealed yea i want you confess and you truly love truly repent of mystery babylon and worship the everlasting father the love of the father will hover over you and manifest the son of everlasting within you and with him within your heart he'll reveal himself in the torah and in enough time about three and a half years, 1,200 and some odd days, y'all, it's going to take for you to rebuild that temple inside of heaven, inside our hearts together, everlasting upon the earth. A faith being raised on high. Yeah, let us not look into the tips of the monuments not let us look at their great heights or their cabalistic carnal ways. Let us reveal the squareness and the plumbness of the altar and not the leaning towards wickedness they profess with each degree, with each of the depths of darkness they wade in, drinking coffee, here yeah, wading in wretchedness up to their knees. Yeah. They go to hell, oh boy, walking down that way, regretting all he'd done, the wickedness running up behind him at each step he takes into the darkness of the pit, coming upon him, yeah, ripping his flesh with what they do behind his back forever. And he comes into this place and he sees this, everyone walking around, the stench of dung, a gate that, like a river of shittim wood, yea, the wretchedness of the sea, the bile, don't drink the water, brother, don't drink their water, it is cursed, if you drink anything from Mystery Babylon, you will be under their spell. For they have pharmacia and sorcery. The wickedness of the earth have placed it in all things to kill you slowly. The blind upon the earth. Yeah. And anything you drink, it goes in fast and creates that cancerous thing that will slay. And with the particles cast forth in the air and the particles cast forth upon the water and the particles cast forth in the food we eat, yeah, the inequity force of three point one, their wicked way of manipulating darkness. They will never see the radiance of a sweet slice of a private eye, Yehoshua, yeah, behind closed doors, 
you and him, the we of each of us, the hope of glory revealed in the living word. The living word is not something that can be revealed by a mortal man. Yeah, it can only be read and received by angels in heaven. Yeah, when the everlasting Father, Maria reveals them before you. Dimly at first, mighty friend. But then, face to face, hey, thank you, Father. The darkness had been cutting us off after about an hour, and we hadn't been able to uh, reveal where it had been being done at but we figured it out this morning so we're still rocking and a rolling y'all by the glory of the everlasting father in our hearts on these two commandments you shall love Mari Yehoshua, ye, the Father's Son, because it is the everlasting Father Yehovah, His Spirit, the Unknowable One, within the mind of the Anointed Son. Ye, when you receive the everlasting glory of the Son, the Ruach Kodesh, which is Yehovah, the unknowable one. When the wise master builder and yourself have built the temple and the mercy seat and prepared all the implements inside your heart, Mariaho Ba Yod He Vav He will come and sit upon your mercy seat. He Everlasting upon this earth, coming in and out with the King of Righteousness, seeking first the kingdom of heaven upon rising each day. And you too can bring heaven upon the earth. Ye, and whether we are found worthy to be our carnal mind and our carnal bodies. Ye, Father, may they be transfigured at your perfect time that we can live radiant and magnificent upon the earth, that your word would be made manifest in each of our hearts in each of the tabernacles of our minds within that the Son of Everlasting, the wise master builder who enters in from the spiritual mind of the anointed sons of Everlasting, Hanukkah warriors of Silicon Valley coming forth, a rock and roll army, he that has never been in all time an army like no other upon the earth, an army of heaven, an everlasting army like will never be again, because this is the everlasting. There is only this everlasting for us all, Yea, may we stand, having done all in the eighth day, at the door of the temple be shut, and the Mashiach would be inside 
our willing vessel, a yellow submarine. Yea, and now we dive deep with him for a whole week that he can reveal the living words of everlasting. Yea, and rain on our seed, our mustard seed. Yea, that the fowls of the air would come and learn and in the Father's perfect time be transfigured in the twinkling of their eye. But know this, the journey is began at the twinkling of the eye. The everlasting sun living he only comes from the temple built deep inside. And that takes about three and a half years, y'all. Forty-two months. Even in troublous times. Even as your family persecute you. You must be willing to leave them. Until the Father's perfect time where they come to you. Having repented and listened and ha and took the journey, having their faith strengthened each day. Yea, that the honey from the rock would be upon their lips. That the stories of Elijah would build their faith and everlasting give them humility and justice for all men. Ah, I know these things are too long, brothers, but forgive me. There's just so much, and there's so little time. And he said to them, then how does David in the spirit call him Yehoshua? Saying, Yehoshua said, Yeah, in my heart. And he heard from our father whom only he knows. The Father is in him, and he in the Father, and we have been made that we may know the Son, that as a son ourselves, that we can become a father and birth a son of humility, a bond servant of the Father, to be raised in the kingdom of light. Yehoshua said, The Lord said to my Lord, Yehovah said to Yehoshua, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. If David then calls him Yehoshua, how is he his son? The cunningness of their craft to conceal the truth. Mighty Yehovah says these things. And Yehoshua only does what the Father wills him to do. For he is the faithful servant of his Father. And has created all things. For he sits at his father's right hand. Yea. And waits. Until all. His son's enemies. Are under his feet. Yea. Taking dominion. 
stomping each threshold, proclaiming the glory of the everlasting kingdom of light and Yehoshua as king and each of us as a prince of his kingdom that one day we may, may be found worthy in the land that he has given us that the people would call us king as we together forever just this one day for a thousand years to learn the everlasting glory the living word and place it upon our heart that the wise master builder Yehoshua, the son of the everlasting, the eternal father, Yehovah, would come and bond servant with us. That in three and a half years and 42 months, we can rebuild the temple hidden deep inside our hearts. But don't tally. Don't tarry. Don't miss your season, brother, for the harvest comes on a matured tree in the fourth year, and the fruit cannot be tasted the first three years, so you mess around too long and you get into it, you might not have enough time. Because if it's thrust upon you the glory of God too quickly and you're not ready for it, and you touch it, you will die. So, don't be like a five or six year old son with a five or six percent carnal mind thinking that you rule and reign upon the earth and that you know all things for a wise man knows nothing but the everlasting that lives within his heart that reveals all things to him with the hope of glory on his shoulders and the love of the word in his heart. Yeah. And the mercy seat built within his temple, a place that the everlasting, yeah, the eternal father resides, the sea of fire, and glass. Seeing. Only in part. And then standing before the mirror. And seeing. The everlasting. Face to face. The spiritual man. That kills the beast within his heart, the carnal mind, by the love of the truth each day in the fourth watch. He, that when he anoints his head, yod he vav he in the name of the Father, with the Son anointing your head with the Father's name, that you can go in Mystery Babylon with faith of the everlasting Son in you and in love, not a clanging symbol, but in love of the Word. Reveal the Word of everlasting to all the earth, all those still imprisoned in their carnal minds in Mystery Babylon. And so he said to them, Then how does the king, the beloved David, 
in the spirit, call him Yehoshua, saying, Maria said to Yehoshua, the everlasting glory of the living word in the hearts and minds of men. Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. So this is how the beloved David in the spirit calls the everlasting. If David then calls him Yehoshua, how is he his son? Father to son, the son becomes the father and sends forth a son and raises the son into a father. Father to son, father to son. He, but no one else was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him another question. So what happens next? Yehoshua spoke to the crowd. Ye, bold as a lion in mystery Babylon. And he spoke to his disciples saying these things. The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moshe. Ye, the prophet who had the everlasting glory in his heart made manifest the word of everlasting. Therefore, all that they tell you, do and observe. But do not do according to their deeds. For they say, and do not do like Hanukkah. Mm. An unrecoverable moment. My heart broken. Now I understand why he broke it. Yeah, as the truth is not in them. Their eighth day, he has an outstretched arm of wickedness, not the everlasting sun of the eighth day. They stand in the background. While he stands defiant, his wick burning. He before all the little children from days of old. Mm, mighty Father, let them be counted. Let their ways of evil be made known to their students, that their students can remove the locks of the temples, these evil men from the synagogue of Satan that deceive the hearts of the righteous. Yea, let them be stricken down as a fig tree that they have no fruitful nature. They only hang rusted locks and throw away the key. 
for they themselves cannot even enter into heaven into the things that they teach they tie up heavy burdens and they lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as a finger do you hear Shema Israel Spiritual tribes of everlasting fathers come forth this very day and live a thousand years with our father Mary Yehovah in the everlasting glory, his son ruling and reigning from the clouds inside our hearts, reigning upon the dry earth. Let the Pharisees do all their deeds to be noticed by men. For they broaden their phalatries and lengthen the tassels Hanukkah warriors swing the sword yeah, that the eighth day alone would come forth forevermore let their tassels be removed let their shame be shown the love yeah, the love of the truth be known in their hearts and minds Let their repented nature cover them with the lamb, not stained lamb skins. Let them, let that flap be removed like the calloused heart, circumcised. Yea. Why would the everlasting Father? as a sign of the covenant with him, have a man's private parts, the ends of it, the tip of the blade, have the foreskin removed to be in covenant with the everlasting Father. Now why would he do such a thing. Have you ever wondered? To be in the covenant. The Jews say. Well no we got to come on. We got to you know. You got to show us your thing here. We got to come over here with a knife. And we got to work on it. Oh yeah. They like working on them things. And when. They stand as. If they have known. The everlasting father. But know not the sun, they know only darkness, and deceive the hearts of men, and they do their work. Yea, I see them doing their work. I see their lustful hearts in what they do. <sighs> Remove such wickedness from the tabernacle of my mind, mighty Father. Remove it from all the earth in this moment. Let your justice and truth be laid as a blade upon them and circumcise them up to the hilt. Yea, remove whatever member would keep them from the kingdom of light or turn them away in this very moment in the darkness that they relish in their silver and gold their grand towers upon the earth that are coming to nothing 
They love the place of honor at banquets and the chief seats in the synagogues and the respectful greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by men. This is what they want. To be reveled by mystery Babylon because they know not the everlasting glory, only the glory given them by men. But when you have the true glory of God, you are one crying in the wilderness, guaranteed. No one no one will be your friend. There is but one that's my friend. A mighty marine. Thank you, brother, for being my only friend. And my brother, faithful friend, Tim, Timothy, a Santa Claus even in dark places. Yeah. Let him receive the temple light of truth in his heart. Yeah, that the Father's work can be done. That the Son of everlasting glory in their hearts could reveal the Father's work and give them the grace and the power and the humility and the love in their hearts to do the Father's work in humility and grace. The love of everlasting glory of the word of peace in our heart. But there will be no peace for those that are unmerciful upon the earth. They will only be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the mighty Father's perfect time. Yea, that the whole earth would open and swallow the swine whole into Sheol. To live forever. That fear and trembling would come upon you all. Because you love the place of honor at banquets. And the chief seats in the synagogues. And the respectful greetings in the marketplaces. And being called rabbi by men. Yehoshua says, but do not be called rabbi. Do you hear? Do you not know the word? But do not be called rabbi. For one, there is but one is your teacher. And you are all brothers. Do you hear? Do not call on earth your father. Do you hear? For one is your father. He who is in heaven. Ye mighty Yahovah. The one that sits upon the mercy seat. The fire and glass. Within the tabernacle of your mind an everlasting sun upon the earth who brings heaven, the will of the Father, upon the earth before the eyes of all the blind men. Yeah, even those who profess to be wise and cunning like the Pharisees of old, even hidden until this very day, trying, to be a wise master builder 
only by the wickedness in the hearts of the demons that the everlasting glory has given each one of them in their front pockets. It should they turn away, let their pockets be opened and consume themselves. If their blade be curved, let it be driven up into their mind. Their weeping and gnashing of teeth would be forever upon them. And those that receive the piercing of the veil of the everlasting glory of the word and let them come forth as the hundred and forty-four thousand seeking which of the spiritual tribes of Israel they are from. There is but one teacher, one counselor, one everlasting glory upon the earth, which is the word living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword, curved or straight. He put that straight parable word stored right through your heart each morning with your prayer and your hunting the kingdom of heaven inside your heart, praying for the righteousness of the Son to receive the work of the Father, where to go in His Word to receive the day's teaching that your faith could be made manifest upon the earth. This is what take the journey, ye, around this great nation is all about. That's why this Sukkot, this lightning bolt that came down with booming thunder just the other day, ye, take the journey, will be rolling along the way soon. The yellow submarine will be tugging ye, a mystery, a glory cloud hidden alongside, going from place to place and camping wherever the glory cloud takes us and staying in that place and walking the land and Revealing the mystery of heaven upon each willing vessel that dares to enter in. And we ask for nothing. We give our lives for you all that you could receive the everlasting glory we hope for. That when Yehoshua comes, this next time that your heart would be prepared for him in the spirit and then when his fullness comes more than you could ever hope or imagine an everlasting moment treasured in time yea may you be a singer of the song of Moshe and the song of the Lamb. Yea, may your harp always be in tune. Do not be called leaders, for there is only one that is your leader, and that is the everlasting glory. Submit the 94% of your spiritual mind that Mystery Babylon it has deceived you that does not exist or has deceived you to believe that it, it, the darkness that they have placed within you yea, and the gold and silver and the shared purse you all have yea, living like fat cats 
in this world. Well, have you ever seen a broke tail stray? Yeah, even their right paw is crushed for the things their left hand has done. But the greatest among you all, he is a servant. Your servant, Yehoshua. Yea, dare to go with a repented heart. Dare to knock upon his door. Dare to let him enter inside your heart and mind. But wait, how do I go and knock on the door and someone else enters inside? Well, when you figure that out, you figured out, how a humble bond servant he receives the twinkling of his eye, the eye of the everlasting Father. Yea, that's in great delight for each son. So whoever exalts himself. Whoever seeks to be served shall be humbled. And whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But if the heart expects to be served, they shall be humbled. For the everlasting glory has left their hearts. Yea, and sits at their right hand awaiting for them to abide in the word of truth. That they're cuddling, that they're hovering. Yea, that their covenant can begin yet again. The way of a righteous man. He falls, yet he rises again and again, wanting the everlasting glory, knowing he is only a flesh and bone, having only been a carnal man, but now learning through the falling how to become strong and mighty in the ways of everlasting men. But woe to you, all you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people. For you do not enter in you, even yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Yea, we know the place. It's revealed in the word. That place that you, yea, cunningly crafted. Yea, let all the graves on the Mount of Olives be a testament against you all. As you're all shut off from the kingdom of heaven, from people, for you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow others to enter in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses, and for pretense... You make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive a greater condemnation. Yea, these next seven weeks, let them be seventy times seven with forgiveness. Let it start with counting your ways 
to see if your cup of iniquity is overflowing on the Sabbath day, or if your living water transfigured into new wine overflows on the Sabbath day. Which cup will you drink this coming Sabbath day? As we commune together forever with the everlasting glory, yea, all those who dare to enter in and dine in the marriage feast. In this 70th year, in this jubilee moment, yea, that is about, is about to begin the beginning at the end. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land to make one prostate. Proselyte. I'm not sure what that is, but Acts 2.10, it says, will reveal it to us. And when he becomes one, two as one, he will not become not with the everlasting glory as you make him twice as much a son of hell as you yourselves. A prostate. Yeah, that's like uh, someone who goes in I'm thinking what the what's put upon my heart is these are uh, warriors who have come in the tradition of their fathers, mighty men of valor that give their whole lives for their love of their country, having been given a darkness in their pocket to worship, a darkness to comfort them in war times, in times on land and sea, under the earth and under the ocean and above the skies of it all. And they, they make covenants in darkness and receive these warriors of these angelic beings and they go forth. These scribes and Pharisees that do these things? Have these things been done to you? Have they made you twice as much a son of hell as those who made you this way? The word made true says it's so. Mighty Marine, you can be forgiven. Your heart can be set free. And the angel, ye, of mighty Yehovah, the everlasting sun, the first temple light, the great temple light, the truth, Yehoshua, your faith is a mustard seed within him. Ye, your badger covering, only being shown. Yeah, your pauper skin and your lamb skin secured. Your ram's hide only revealed in the temple inside. By the Father of lights bringing to remembrance what you are to remember from days of old. For he wipes your mind completely clean. 
of all your wickedness so that you would be set free. Nightmares of demons no more. And you rest a peace with the everlasting glory of the sun, Yehoshua, in your heart and mind. And when you're called upon, you go forth in righteousness and truth to slay the wickedness upon the earth, the unrighteous, those who seek eh, to deceive the world, the synagogue of Satan, and deceive all the earth in mystery Babylon. Eh, did they not move the Sabbath day? Does all the earth blind and not rejoice? It's a sign of a covenant with the everlasting Father. Eh, if they don't do that, they have the truth not within them. If they do one thing and profess another, they are before my eyes professing their legion within them to the legions upon the universal church of Mystery Babylon. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple is obligated. You fools, you blind men, which is more important, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? Hmm? You are the temple. Stand not in one. Stand as one. You blind men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sacrifices the offering hidden deep inside your heart, built by Yehoshua and each willing vessel in the depths of all time. Therefore, whoever swears by the altar swears by the altar and by everything on it. What's placed upon your altar? A weaver's work of a one world government? Is the plumness of your altar sides to be laid waste for what it does upon the earth? And whoever swears by the temple swears by the temple and by him who dwells within Yehoshua, the everlasting glory. Yea, are there wicked demons. Yea. Y'all be nice and call them Democrats. Don't be calling them demons crap anymore. And whoever swears by the heaven they have created inside their hearts. Yeah, carnal wickedness of hell within them. They swear by the throne of the everlasting Father. Yeah, and by him who sits upon it, which is Baphomet. It is the deceptive image of the everlasting sun. It is what they, Mystery Babylon, worship. 
Yeah, pig Latin in the sky. Let no man deceive you. You are in mystery, Babylon. Turn away. Seek Hebrew. Understand the language. Begin to take the journey to rebuild the temple. The three and a half year journey beginning now in this moment that you can live forever and for all time seen and unseen upon the earth moving in and out of the gate and the power of the everlasting glory of the sun yea, hinges on the right hand side a door that swings the right way and never the left or your hinges one on each side where your door will not open or your hinges on the left hand side and swing and now you find that your fingers yeah snapped broke like the tail's cat and the cat's tail yeah the right hand removed that you might enter in before it's too late a left hand would never even consider the evermore woe to you scribes and pharisees Hypocrites! For you tithe, mint, and deal, and cumin. Smell their scents. Receive the revelation of all time. And have neglected the weightier provisions of the law. Justice. And mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Yehoshua is coming. Yea, for you clean the outside of the cup. Yea, and of the dish. But inside, they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. Wickedness beyond. Oh, God. Forgive each of us, mighty Father. Remove the blindness from our eyes that we can repent and find the narrow way of truth, justice, in the pursuit of happiness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are like Whitewashed tombs that, yeah, I've seen them. They stand as a witness against you all on the Mount of Olives. Yea, may the earth quake and the earth open and swallow them all whole in their wickedness. Those that have not the wedding clothes on. But should they have their wedding clothes and be a bride in waiting, let them come forth at the mighty Father's perfect time from the Mount of Olives and do their work at the beautiful gate. Yea, a double wide. That that narrow gate and that beautiful gate that has been bricked over, the locks that hang upon your ears, 
Yeah, camel's hair. Long along your side. Woe to you, you hypocrites. You Pharisees, you scribes, for you are but the whitewashed tombs, which are outside, yea, upon that hill they look so beautiful by the gate, yea, but the gate is full of mason stone, and no one can enter inside. On the outside they appear beautiful, like the gate. But on the inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. The horror of mystery Babylon spreads her legs there. So you too, mighty friend, Outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. All the earth, is there not one righteous man who would sit beside me with a wanting, a true repentance and longing for the everlasting glory? Revealed in the living word before the hearts and minds of anointed men. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. For you build the tombs of the prophets. And adorn the monuments of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers. We would not have been partners with them in the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. You should be weeping. It shouldn't be this way. Fill up then the measure of your father's. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how will you escape the sentence of hell? Will you ever find the narrow way that we are to go? Having done all to stand on the eighth day, Adam, once more. Therefore, behold, Yehoshua will be sending prophets and wise men and other scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city so that upon you may fall All the righteous blood shed on the earth. From the blood of the righteousness of an able. Yea, an able son. An able sailor. An able man. Yea, wanting to be found worthy. To be called captain of a yellow submarine. Let that sink in. Therefore, let the foolishness of mystery Babylon would confound the wise of mystery Babylon. And that the humble would receive in this everlasting moment 
the words of life. Therefore, Yehoshua will send you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them will kill you. No, forgive me. Some of them they will kill. And some of them they will even crucify. Yea, like the son of glory. And some of them they will these hypocrites will scourge in their synagogues and persecute from city to city. I went up I was going to go and see them. The father said, Go east, head east. And I was going to Philadelphia, New York City, yeah, Chicago, all that up there. And the father said, if you go, they will kill you. So I did not go. I went, he said, go west. So I went west from Washington, D.C., east and to the west. And I ended up in a place where it all began. Fort Lost in the Woods, over there by the goldenness yeah, of the eagle. Yeah that flies with the brood over the sea. And he, the great eagle, took flight, the face of a man, took flight, the roar of the lion ran and hid in the den of darkness. So the eagle, yeah, flying over the green pastures, looking over the ox, yeah, the apostolic one on the west, that reveals the mystery, who is wanting the revelation in its fullness. Yea, may he find it in your perfect time, mighty Father. Let him not be discouraged. Let his wanting to be served, let his reckoning be swift and let his humility be made manifest in all of our hearts and minds. Let the coming of the glory upon him, his crying out for it, ye each day, reveal it to him, Father, on the day that he speaks the word of everlasting. The word is revelation. That is the name of the book. It is where revelations can come from, but only a revelation comes from a revelation book. And it's only the gathering of all these things, can they become revelations, but they are never the book of revelations. They are the book of revelation, the revelation of the everlasting Son in each of our hearts and minds. The truth revealed very suddenly before the wise. So Yahshua came out from the temple. 
that the wickedness of Mystery Babylon had constructed, knowing the wickedness in their hearts, and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him and how ignorant of the kingdom of heaven his disciples are. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things happen and what the sign of your coming and of the end of the age might be? And Yehoshua answered his disciples, but none other would even hear his words. And these men understand, understood nothing. Their eyes had not been opened. They had not received the, his spirit because he had not left that the Father could send himself upon each of us for the blood of the Son freely given to enter in each of our hearts that we can mm, humble ourselves and be a, a bondservant of the everlasting Father. And he was sitting on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age. And you know what Yahshua answered and said to them? See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in the name of Yehoshua. Yea, in the name of Jesus. Saying that they are the Christ's. Yea and will mislead many. For the word, yea, like a five or six year old child, they run out with it like they know it all, and they know nothing. Blind and wretched. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened. For those things must take place, but that is not the end yet. For nation ye shall rise against nation, the us against what would that be that would be like spy versus spy yeah that's black and white yeah like tiles on a bathroom floor a washing place for your feet to come into the evermore A nation will rise against nation and the kingdom of light ye will and the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. 
For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. And none look to help them or understand why. But all these things are the the beginning of birth pains. Who will go and be alongside the bride? Who will feed the hungry? Yea, and pray for them that the earth would not open up and swallow us all whole, especially in San Jacinto Monument. Yea, Andreas on the cleft of the rock. Yea, a seashore. Then they will deliver you to tribulation, all who learn this teaching. And those who do not learn and receive it in the season, they will kill you, for you were found unworthy. Your fig tree, unfruitful, withered, and you will be hated by all nations because of the name of Jesus. Or my name, Yehoshua, the everlasting glory of our Father, Yehovah. What will you be hated for? The new name or the old name? What does the revelation of the revelation have to say in 312 as you get ready to go into the everlasting of 314? At that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Yea, many will leave Mystery Babylon and they'll be hated for it because they know a righteous man knows the wickedness that they and their fathers have concealed with a cunningness that they would kill a man if they would let the secret out. Many false prophets they send forth Yea, speaking words of Jesus and speaking their word to imprison minds of men and not revealing the Hebraic word of the new and the old and all the books in between. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Yehoshua in each heart. Yehovah in each mind. The sun upon the earth. Two is one with the Father. The mystery of heaven revealed before your eyes. But the one who endures will have the Son in his heart forever. This gospel of the kingdom, this revelation of mystery Babylon, will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then 
the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Yea, when evil is revealed in the hearts of men, the tabernacle of David, that they have, ye ruthlessly declared their rulership over. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Ye, the tabernacle of their mind, And in fear and trembling work out their salvation with the Mashiach. Hoping that this Sukkot, that he will actually enter inside. Yea, a whole week in heaven with the Mashiach. And then walking radiant and magnificent upon the earth in his garden the birds sing the glory of God yea the elk heard in the deep wilderness coming forth like the crashing of a moose yea like the quacking of the mallard, yea, like the whale spewing a fountain of living water from the depths of the mighty sea. Then you'll know who stands upon the earth with evil in their hearts that they stand in mystery Babylon to make war with the saints, that only by the living word, fully, ye after three days, can the fruit be pulled in the fourth season, after ye three and a half years of the seed going in, and them showing themselves approved for they have studied first a Torah portion each week by Nehemiah yea and a few prophet pearls along the way and moved to the rudest one of all the Michael and the J, ye, the face of the man on the east coast that reveals the mystery of Solomon. A rude awakening dot TV, and on Friday nights at eight o'clock Eastern, Shabbat night live where he reveals the living word and the revelation of the everlasting glory upon the earth given him with each step of his journey. He shares it with love for us all. Then as the Mashiach comes upon your heart in the Sukkot, you fly like an eagle from the east and to the west with a Mashiach in your heart and stand before the horns of the mighty bull, yea, the ox that treads the grain continuously, another angel Michael on the west coast, a rock, a Petros, that reveals the mystery of Moshe upon the earth. 
four f o r e four runner are you in any r t v dot com is his website ye yeah. another worthy brother another seeker of the truth a pocket field yeah, with the wanting of the hope of glory in the tabernacle of his mind and the last michael the last angel that soars above them all a military man of intelligence a reckoning yea a man planted in the place where i led many men long ago ye fort leonard wood ye back in the 90s y'all i led many men to rebuild the museum there and worked with many other mighty men to build the mock city there for the training of our military to assault upon residential areas like Mayberry RFD is what it looked like so they could play war games in Mayberry I built a place like that with many men for the government regretting every day of it the spirit was speaking to me but I would not hear him and then we built the most evil thing i think well it could be one of the most evil things upon the earth there a laboratory for vx gas the only legal location in this great nation where it, it can be manufactured and stored and possess the most deadliest substance upon the earth forgive me father for making a laboratory for making such an evil thing <laughs> oh forgive me father oh forgive each of the builders we know not what we do bring us into your glory father strengthen us that we can be forgiven for what we have done <laughs> that we could stand with your glory in us upon the earth like shining brighter than the firmament of the sun that is within us oh thank you father for each of the chosen and each willing vessel called that comes forth to receive their mustard seed at the father's perfect time let it receive rain and burst forth living sacrifice each day in their heart that you like a lamb upon the green pasture by the still water would blow a gentle breeze across the tabernacle of our mind each day that we would do all things and to bring glory to you father and that we would only be led by your son yahushua that you have given all things to that made all things that judges all things rejoices in all things and lives forever in the hearts of the everlasting sons that love truth the word more than their next breath because 
You have to give your whole life for the word to receive. Yeah, the sorrow, the pain, the suffering, the testing, to find the forgiveness for your brother that unlocks heaven and sets you free. It's only by this forgiveness that the capstone of the Roslyn key there that the bridge could be completed and the armies could cross forth. And there, and then there, will be a great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of this very world until now, nor ever will be again. You see, unless those days had been cut short, yeah, you know how the glory cuts the time into seconds, hours into seconds and minutes, the deeper you go. Yeah, if they weren't cut off, no life would have been saved. But for each of your sakes, the sake of the elect of those days, each day will be shortened in the glory. Let us dare to enter in. Having repented, having the word filled us, having properly prepared, yeah, that we would not be killed. Yeah, that we would not be hated. That the tribulation delivered upon you, the sifting would have been made complete by your faithfulness before this moment, by the root you tapped into long ago. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe them, as the everlasting is a spirit that enters in the hearts of men, a wise master builder that unlocks your carnal mind, and sets the stones found as you cross the Jordan with him again and again. Unhewn stone, the altar made, that burning flesh laid upon it each day that it would not consume you, yeah, that your member would be removed yeah, and now we know why only wise men are old and never young. Their pomegranate tree is still full of pollen. Yeah, and has not brought forth yeah, the pod that holds the seeds. Yeah, until it falls at the perfect time from the opened hull hanging off the branch yeah, like a vine. Behold, I have told you all these things in advance and in a way that 
your carnal mind can be unlocked. That your spiritual mind can be given to Yehoshua this day with a faith of a mustard seed that your nightmares, your trials and tribulation, your hatred of others and those that lust for your blood would not find it. At that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Yeah, the demons in their hearts are reapers and killers of this day. Because lawlessness of the reprobate mind is increased, most people's love will grow cold. Mystery Babylon has a hold of them and won't let go. But the one who endures, yea, to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. Yea, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And then the end will come. So if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner room, yea, dumbfounded in the way found below. Do not believe them. For just as the lightning, yea, comes, yea, the angel of Michael on the east, and flashes even into the angel of Michael to the west, so will the coming of the Mashiach be. In the hearts and minds of everlasting men, chosen, and that all that hear the call would come at the Father's perfect time. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, When you begin to be set free in these moments with the faith of a mustard seed, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the heaven and the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the sun of man will appear in the sky. And then all the spiritual tribes of Israel, ye, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds. Yea, a glory cloud on the earth leading them forty years in the desert. The clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. 
Now, mighty friend, that you have received your treasured moment, long ago, (coughs) and you received and did nothing with it. If you bite not this word, this sweet fig, yeah, those figs taught you in days of old will be pig and swine meat on your flesh. A witness against you forever. Now, mighty friend, learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves. You know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near at the door waiting for you to knock. Truly, he said to each of us, to you especially, brother, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the everlasting sun, the everlasting glory upon the earth will never pass away. But of that day and that hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the everlasting glory of the Son, but the Father of lights, Mary Yehovah alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. Genesis 6 and 5. Inquiring minds want to know. For as in those days before the flood, yea, before the revelation of the word came down on our day, everyone was eating and drinking, marrying whomever they wanted, and giving in marriage whomever they wanted male or female until the day that Noah entered the ark. Hmm. Yom Kippur he entered in. Were you too blind to see it, mighty friend? Oh, were the cares of this world, yeah, the cares of this life, Did they overcome you and blinded you from the truth of the word? Yea, and they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Yea, the barley. Passover. Yea, the counting of the Oma. The day that we receive Torah. Yea, that day. That season. Yea. What comes.
comes in that season. Hmm? Flaming fire upon their head. The glory, knowledge of the word of everlasting. Let it go out, ye, as the water covers the raging sea. That your eyes, that the scales held by your left hand, and the angel feather upon it, yea, the mercy would be given to the merciful, that they can be weighted and counted and then be set free by the evil upon the earth, having their forehead, yea, the mind, of the anointed son anointed with yod hey vav hey the hope of glory the mind of the father and the love of the word the love of his son the word made flesh in each of our hearts in each of our minds Are you reflecting, mighty friend? Is the truth, is the weight of the ocean, the flood upon your mountain, weighting it down where the thrusting of the open pores in the rock, allowing the water to go down into the darkness of the caverns, Yea, the deep underground military bases, that they would be filled with living water as a cistern carved out, yea, even by mighty men, workers of wanting the truth, but being a prisoner in Mystery Babylon, a slave to bring forth ye NORAD the Pentagon the Space Centers ye the unveiling of Broom Lake and the SR-71 all moments, the men, the builders that we have worked alongside our whole life in Mystery Babylon, blind to it all. We've left them, but we call back unto all those in their slavery this day to be set free, brother. Be a mighty man for the everlasting Father. Love him. Yahovah, the God of the Jews, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true worshipers of mighty Yahovah. Let not the wickedness of the synagogue of Satan, and the counterfeit of all things good, ye, corrupting the hearts of men in mystery Babylon, these last couple of days, let it be no more. For this reason, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think that he will. The mystery of heaven now revealed. You still, in fear and trembling, must work out your salvation. That the Mashiach can come when the Father tells him you are ready as he will never give you more than you can bear in that moment. That's why it takes so long 
to receive the fullness of the sun as the glory. If you touch the ark and you're unworthy, you'll be slain instantly. A bolt of lightning will come down and remove you from the earth. The earth will open and swallow your whole family whole. That the wretchedness and the snares will not be upon the earth evermore. Who then is the faithful and sensible slaves? Hmm? Whom their master put in charge of this household. To give them their food at the proper time. Hmm? Who are they? These faithful and sensible bond servants. Mystery Babylon tries to stone and points their fingers at and says, Look at this madman with a demon inside. That the word would be made true. Yea, even in their blindness, they make the word truth. Blessed is that bond servant who has humbled himself that the master finds doing these humble, revelatory, yea, things each day across a living sacrifice, a tree of life upon the earth that he would be well pleased when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will put in charge all his possessions. But if that evil bondservant says in his heart, My master is not coming for a long time, and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat and drink with drunkards, Whom could that possibly be? What organization would dare roar like a lion such as that? Who would seek to devour men like a lion? Hmm. Yehuda, a lion's whelp. There you have it. For the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect and at an hour which he will never know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the parable of the ten virgins. Ye no, don't be wise or foolish. Be the one who calls out in the darkness. That the glory of the everlasting Father, his Son, can be revealed in the tabernacle of your heart. The wise master builder would rebuild the temple inside your mind.